Hey guys, Dan Carr here from Shuttermuse.com. Today I want to walk you through the process for creating an image that I did recently of a total lunar eclipse that took place here in April 2014. So what we're going to be doing is using Adobe Photoshop and a little bit of Lightroom, but I'm also going to show you how you can do it just with Photoshop or using Bridge as well. And this is the image that we're going to be looking to recreate. Now, I'm going to show you how I put together this sequence and edited these images in Photoshop. If you want the technical details about how I shot the image in the first place, things like equipment and camera settings, there is a detailed blog post that goes with this video. If you're watching directly on YouTube, head to the link in the description below. So this is what we're looking to create. And you'll see these are all of the files that I started with. And um, yeah, quite a lot of them. But this process of the eclipse was about three and a half hours long. So lots of different images of the moon in different stages. Now you'll see that I've made some selections which I've colored in red. Let's just change this to just show those red ones. Now I've cropped everything out around that because we just need the moon section there. And I've made some basic adjustments to these images in Lightroom here. Now this is important because there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Now the first way that I'm going to show you is a little bit easier and it's going to be perfect for 95% of people out there. And this requires that you make your adjustments to the image before you import them to Photoshop. So if you've got a big selection of images like this, you want to make sure that you shot them all at the same exposure. So you can do that by just, you can, you can eye them up like this, but you can also select them, press the C key and do a side by side comparison to make sure things like the contrast and the exposures are looking the same for all of them. Now, when you've done that, uh, let's just select three of these images because if I select too many of them, this is going to take too long. So we'll select the images that we want. We'll right click. And then if you come to the edit in menu, we'll see this bottom option open as layers in Photoshop. So that's what we're going to click. Now in the background here, let's open up Photoshop. Photoshop is going to take each of those images and it's going to open them all and then combine them into one document and there'll be one layer for each of those images. So here's the document here. You can see we've got all these different layers in here. Now, what we actually want to work with is a much bigger canvas than this. So I'm going to click this button down here to create a new layer, drag it to the bottom, come up here and change this to a background layer by going new background from layer. This changes to a background layer. Now I'm going to hit the G key. And we've got the color set to black. We want a nice black sky background to work with here. So I'm going to click that. Let's turn the background black. Now, if I come up to image and hit canvas size, you'll see we have about a seven by seven inch canvas right now. We want something much bigger to work with here. So I'm going to hit 20 by 20 and just expand this out. So we've got some more room to work with. Now, hitting the V key, so we have the arrow, we can start to drag these images around. Now, the first thing you'll see is that they Start, so they start to cover things up a little bit. So what we can do, if I select this one, you'll see over here in the layer palette, we'll go to the blend mode and we're going to change this to lighten. And as you see that, the black disappears immediately. And now this is only showing what is lighter than this image. Okay, so we can do the same thing with this one as well. Come over here, lighten. So now we can start to drag these around and you can put them really close to each other to create the effect that you're looking for with your sequence. So there's a few other things we have to do though to make this look right. Now, if I zoom in a little bit on this, you can see this haze around the edge of this particular moon. Now the moon, the light from the moon is reflecting off the, uh, the atmosphere and it was quite a cloudy night. There was a lot of moisture in the air. So uh, in this particular shot, they vary because the process was quite long and, and the atmosphere changes all the time. They vary, but this one looks quite bad. There's a lot of this shine and it'll also depend on how many adjustments that you make in Lightroom before you add the images here. If you have to crank the sliders up a lot, you're going to see a lot of noise creeping into this um, around the black area around the moon. So what we actually want to do is just isolate the white part of the moon. And I'll show you how to do that. We're going to take the circular selection tool. You can see we can create an ellipse with this if you just drag it around. If you hit the shift key though, it'll change it to a perfect circle. Now, another trick, you can hit shift option key and it actually drags out from the center in that way. But we don't really need to do that right now. So let's just create a circle like this to go around the moon. You can see that's that's pretty close. Um, I can probably actually go up to select, modify, contract. And let's just take this down by 
uh, five pixels a little bit, get it even closer. Uh, maybe we can go a little bit more, contract another five pixels. I'm going to get this pretty close to the moon. Now we'll come over here to the layers palette. And what we're going to do is create a layer mask to mask out everything other than the moon. So we hit this button down here, which is the add layer mask button. When you do that with a selection in progress, you'll see what happens. It instantly creates this mask and it masks out everything around the moon in this case. Now we still, we didn't get this obviously right up against the moon. So we still need to make a few adjustments here. So what we're going to do is hit the B key to have our brush. We have the color black selected and we have the layer mask selected, not the actual image. Now I'm zoomed right in here at 300%. In fact, we can even go to 400. And what you can do is start painting with the brush very carefully along the edge of the moon like this. Okay. Now remember that this is a layer mask. So you're not actually painting on the image. You're just painting on the mask. So you can always go backwards if you make a mistake. So if we make a mistake like this, we can hit the X key and that switches the brush to white. And then we can just brush that right out again. Okay. So back to black and we can fix that right. There we go. Now I'm not going to do this. It's take quite a long time. It is a bit time consuming. Um, but if you zoom out, you'll see that here we're getting a nice crisp edge to the moon on our black background now. So what you would do is go around each of your moons and this is going to take out any of the noise that was in the blacks and uh, any of this sort of atmospheric haze that you get the light reflecting off the moon. Now once you've done that let's actually open up we'll go back to Lightroom for a second let's change this and let's find our original document here so edit in Photoshop uh, let's edit the original file so we can just open up and you can see what this file looks like once you've done everything. Now I used a bunch of guides to line all, all these things up. We can hide those, but you'll see over here in the layers palette, each of my sections and each of these moons now has a layer mask. So everything is painted out apart from the moon and we have really nice crisp edges to all the stages of the moon like that. And then you can take these and arrange them. You know, I chose this, this sort of arcing pattern here, but uh, there's lots of other ways to do it. You can create um, diagonal lines. In fact, in the blog post, you'll see a few more, but you can see I've got some other options that I put together here. Uh, in the end, I really liked this sort of arc that goes round. Now, there's another way that you can do this. If you don't have uh, Adobe Lightroom, you can also load them directly from Photoshop. So you go to File, Scripts, oh, Scripts, and then Load Files into Stack. Now here you can choose either files or folders. Let's choose a folder. Now if I just come here for a second, we'll go onto the desktop, open up this folder, and I have a special folder here that I've created for this tutorial called Moonstack. If I just click open there, you see these files that are in that folder and you can click OK. And it's gonna do exactly the same thing. It's gonna open those three images each on their own layer, just like it did when we opened them into a stack from Lightroom. So let's close that one. We don't need that one. I'm going to show you one more time how to do this in Bridge as well. So here is that exact same folder there, those exact same three files. With this one in Bridge, you can select the files and we come up here to Tools. It's going to have to think about this for some reason. Okay, Tools, Photoshop. And here we have, it's, everything's labeled slightly differently, but here it says Load Files into Photoshop Layers. So we do that. And again, the exact same process happens. We get each of these files in separate layers like that. So that's the important thing to keep everything in separate layers and to paint out all of this stuff that you don't want using a layer mask and not actually painting it out or, or editing it out with a, a razor. You know, that's the worst thing you can do. The beauty of Photoshop and using layers and all the tools is to be totally non-destructive with everything. So layer masks are your friend when you're creating this. And then once you've done it all, you'll have something that looks like this and you'll have each of these layer masks and uh, hopefully a pretty awesome looking moon sequence. So there's one other way that I want to show you guys. This method required you to edit the photos in Lightroom and get them all synced up and looking uh, similar to each other and how you want them in the final image before you bring them into Photoshop. There's actually another way that you can do this. It's actually the way that I did it. It takes a little bit longer um, but it gives you a bit more flexibility. So if you're really into it, um, let's continue and let's have a look at this. Now we'll come back into our section here. We've got these files um, that we like, the red ones. And let's click, let's right click on one of them this time 
and sorry, we're gonna go edit in, and this time we're gonna hit open as smart object in Photoshop. Now what a smart object is, is essentially a raw file within a layer of Photoshop. So now we have this image, we have this layer, you can see it in here, and you have this little symbol in the corner. Now this means this is a smart object. What happens with a smart object is when you double click on it, it actually opens Adobe Camera Raw, so you can continue to make adjustments. So for example, let us say that we wanted to go back to Lightroom, let's open a second image, edit in, open as smart object, back to Photoshop. Now let us take this, we'll right click on this one, the smart object, click duplicate layer, change the document to the previous one, and what, what this actually does is duplicate this smart object into this document with the other smart object here. So now we have two smart objects, and then what we can do now, if I can, I'll just shrink one of these down just so uh, we can see them all in the same document. And then we're gonna change this layer to lighten again, so, okay. Now, the beauty of this is that your changes haven't been baked into the image when you've imported it into Photoshop. You still have the freedom to make completely um, regular raw file adjustments once you've put this together. So you can load in all of your images and then you can start to tweak things, add a bit of contrast, add a bit of clarity, adjust the exposure of one moon versus the other one. Because over the course of several hours, the exposure on the moon, especially during an eclipse, really changes a lot. And it's difficult in camera to get them all looking exactly the same. So now we have these images and we just have two here, but in my final one, you saw I had 15 or so. Um, we still have the ability to double click on them just like that and open this image in Camera Raw. So if I look at this one and I decide that this one is too bright, I can drag the exposure down. I'm overdoing it just so you can see it. Then you click OK and then it changes this image right in Photoshop there. Okay, so then we can come back here and we can open this back up again. We can bump the raw file back up to where it was, hit OK, and then it changes it back again. So you basically build um, the image just like this one with each of these smart objects and you can go in and make edits to each of these. You know, maybe here on these red ones I want to add a little bit of uh, red saturation or I want to take out a bit of the contrast or I want to do a little bit more noise reduction on, on some of them because there's uh, vastly different exposures, different ISO settings. So you probably will end up needing to do a different amount of noise reduction in each of these images. And so with all of these, that's perfect because you can open them up later and then you can come in here and you can change the noise reduction here, slide this around, and then you can basically just make your edits on the fly and you haven't lost any information. You're just stacking up all of your raw files together and you haven't baked, you haven't really baked anything in until you export this file from whatever it is, you, you know, from uh, Lightroom into the JPEG that you want to put on your website. So... Um, smart objects are an amazing thing. It's a little bit more time consuming though because you can't select multiple images and load them all into a stack of smart objects. So you have to open them uh, one by one as we did here and then duplicate the layers on top of each other. So you would maybe create one new document uh, as your background document and continuously duplicate all of your smart object layers onto that one document until you had them all set up like this. And then you'd mask them out with the layer masks, just like we saw at the beginning, and then go through and open each of them in Camera Raw and then tweak them all until they're looking exactly how you want them to. So there you go, guys. I've shown you several ways to put this together. I hope that was informative. Um, you know, Photoshop is a great way to do this, and I would use Lightroom if you have it, but like I showed you, you can also use Bridge or load the images directly into Photoshop. Now, uh, you know, lunar eclipses don't happen all the time, but when they do, I really would urge you to get out there and see this. It really is such a cool thing to photograph, and I'm, I'm so glad that I was able to get out there on this particular night and put this, uh, this image together. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. We'll have plenty more content like this in the future. Bye-bye.